Hello, Adriana, do you have any questions? <laughs> yes. I wanted to comment what an awesome department this is. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Looks like uh, we have a couple of guests. Hello, everybody. Can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, uh, let's see, we got uh, Verbit and uh, Renee. Um, can you guys hear me? I, need to I can hear you. Okay. If you guys unmute your mic, you can let us know if we can hear you. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, let's see, I'll wait another minute to 1.30 precisely. And then uh, I can do one of two things. Uh, we can jump straight into uh, any questions you might have, or I can try to give you a little bit of an overview of our department and our program. Okay, so it's 1.30 precisely. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Nikos Murtus, uh, professor and uh, chair of the aerospace engineering department uh, at San Jose State University. 
And uh, you can also see our uh, department analyst, uh, Miss Adriana Dot, uh, who is going to be most helpful to all of you guys if you have questions about uh, anything that relates to our department. Um, I, uh, maybe I maybe I jumped the gun and I, we have people still coming in. Um, so I'll give people a few more seconds, um, maybe another minute. Oh wow, we got a popular department. Okay, uh, now I cannot start, you know, we only have 13 guests. That, that's not a lucky number. Um, <laughs> we, we have to go over 13, otherwise one of you guys needs to leave. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, 15, that's... No, oh, there's there more, goes. there's more coming. <laughs> okay, I'll wait. Okay, Adriana, if you, if you guess where I am, you get a one pound of, uh, of a Blue Mountain coffee. <laughs> where you're at, let's see. No clue. No clue, huh? No clue. some field in Europe somewhere. Well, let, let me shock you. Does it look familiar? You're at the office? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> 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 I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I bet. I bet your car had a shock this morning driving there. <laughs> no, my car was fine. I came to check on my plants, and uh, only my plastic mini roses are still alive. <laughs> I bet. I bet it looks terrible. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Yeah. I um, think we're good. So, good afternoon, everyone, again. Uh, my name is uh, Nikos Murtos, and I'm professor and uh, department chair of aerospace engineering at San Jose State University. I will also introduce you uh, to our faculty. Um, I, I think I need to reintroduce, reintroduce uh, Ms. Adriana Dot, our department analyst. Uh, Hello, everyone. She's going to be helping you out uh, with uh, any paperwork and any questions uh, you may have. Yes. And uh, I'm sharing our faculty um, page. So uh, you already saw my face. I will introduce our full-time faculty. You can see Dr. Periclis Papadopoulos, our 
expert in space um, transportation and exploration. Uh, Dr. Lucia Captevilla, um, our astrodynamics expert, Dr. Maria Chierichetti in aerospace structures and structural dynamics, Dr. Fabrizio Vergine, our hypersonics expert. And uh, we also have um, a bunch of uh, um, uh, um, adjunct faculty, um, some of which are from uh, NASA Ames or other local aerospace companies. Um, I will introduce to you uh, Dr. Janine Hunter, who is a full-time uh, uh, adjunct professor and one of the founding members uh, of our program uh, from back in uh, 1991. The program actually started in uh, 1987. So um, if you guys uh, are okay with uh, me giving you a a quick introduction to our department and then uh, uh, feel free to ask uh, any questions that uh, that you may have. So let's see. Oh, I put music on it. I, I'm getting I'm getting uh, sophisticated, uh, but I need to shut it off because I'm going to talk. Uh, let's see. How do I do that? No, I can't do that. OK, so I will work from here. So our, our department was founded in 1987. And uh, believe it or not, I was uh, the first faculty member to be hired and, and I'm still here. So we, we really do take care of our people, both faculty and students. Um, the, the founding member was uh, Dr. Dick Desotel, who was also the first uh, department chair. And when we started our aerospace engineering um, program, we were the only aerospace engineering program from uh, Seattle uh, up north uh, to Boulder East and all the way down to Los Angeles. We, we had our, we admitted our first transfer students in 1989. We got our first ABIT accreditation uh, in 1991, at which point we had about uh, 400 majors. And in 1992, we started our master's program with emphasis on satellite subsystems. Um, so our, our distinctive in uh, both our bachelor's and, and master's program is uh, we have a very broad curriculum, which is supported uh, by state-of-the-art uh, laboratories. So our, our philosophy is, is to have a broad treatment of uh, all AE subjects. Um, aerospace engineering is, is a very broad interdisciplinary subject area. Uh, so we cannot afford to over-specialize. And, and in fact, we try to integrate the curriculum through projects uh, and integrate analytical work computational work and also you know hands-on design and experimentation. So this is a, a, a quick summary of our of our uh, curriculum and you can see we start at the bottom with a pretty strong foundation of uh, math and uh, science and then we go into engineering fundamentals including programming CAD and report writing and then uh, we have uh, three very strong stems, uh, one in aerodynamics and propulsion, another one in aerospace structures and materials, a third one in aerospace dynamics and controls. And the courses that you see listed here are required courses. So any student who goes through our program will get a very strong foundation in all three of these areas, uh, thermal fluids, structures and materials, and uh, dynamics and controls, okay? And we also give you some background in electronics, uh, which is very useful for hands-on work in wind tunnels and, and uh, space systems labs. The culminating experience um, in the program is our capstone senior design uh, 
in which you can specialize either in aircraft or in spacecraft design. And we also have a bunch of electives uh, in space systems engineering, astrodynamics, advanced dynamics and simulation, uh, rocketry, if you like to uh, launch rockets and become certified uh, with uh, the Tripoli uh, organization, and also uh, UAV design. Um, our master's program is, is just as broad. Again, we cover all the basics. Uh, um, so we, we don't like people to over specialize, you know, in any one of the core areas, but we want to make sure that everybody has the fundamentals in each of the core areas, uh, like dynamics and controls, aerospace structures and materials, aerodynamics, uh, propulsion, and of course, uh, advanced mathematics and um, uh, computational skills. And, and if you do want to specialize, which we encourage that, you do that uh, with your master's projects and also your uh, electives. So in the master's program, actually, we highly encourage uh, our students to co-author papers with our faculty and go present them at conferences. In fact, every year we have a bunch of students who do just that. Uh, last summer, we had about 14 presentations at a conference that I hosted uh, virtually. Um, and and uh, Dr. Papadopoulos is also hosting uh, the uh, Interplanetary Probe Workshop in collaboration with JPL and NASA Ames. And we also have uh, another 12 you know, um, to 15 students presenting papers at that conference. So you have lots of opportunities to do research with our faculty and um, uh, interact uh, with uh, professionals in the field. A quick sample of our laboratories. Uh, this is our uh, microsatellite uh, uh, manufacturing and testing lab in uh, 236, where we try to certify the lab. Um, to be able to uh, manufacture and test uh, uh, microsatellites uh, according to NASA, you know, standards, so so they can go into a launch vehicle, you know, uh, straight out of our lab. Here is our antenna in, a, in the roof of the engineering building uh, for our ground station, uh, with which you know we can track uh, satellites. Um, our subsonic, you know, wind tunnel. And, and uh, we, we also have now a hypersonic uh, wind tunnel, which is almost operational. Uh, we still need to integrate a compressor and a booster uh, for our valve and a control system. Uh, these are some of the photos from our water tunnel flow visualization, uh, where you study the flow characteristics of uh, different flows. Uh, we take pride in uh, our students participating in uh, uh, hands-on design projects and uh, we have a long tradition participating in the AIAA design build fly competition which by the way we have won twice in uh, 2013 and 2016 um, and we we pretty much place in the top uh, 10 you know every year uh, in a very competitive field of about 100 participants from uh, the US and around the world. And uh, um, we're also very active in rocketry. Uh, we, we have a team um, that has been designing and building and launching a high altitude uh, uh, rocket uh, um, vehicle. Um, and that's a very exciting project. Uh, in fact, uh, we have also an ongoing collaboration with the Naval Postgraduate School on rocketry, and we work with uh, their students, you know, to to build rockets and uh, and launch them. Um, our faculty have pioneered uh, um, microsatellites. In fact, if you if you Google the word, um, you'll you'll find uh, the name of Dr. Papadopoulos and SCSU and our department. Um, and uh, we have launched, uh, um, I think this is probably a little bit old, uh, probably nine missions uh, uh, to the uh, International Space Station during, uh, since 2012. So you can see on the slide here on the left, uh, the deployment of uh, the first one, uh, the TechEdSat uh, one. Uh, TechEdSat stands for Technology Education you know, Satellite. 
So we're, we're very proud of, of our collaboration with, uh, with NASA Ames. And, uh, and here is our, uh, our team, the TechSAT team, um, headed by Dr. Papadopoulos and Dr. Murbach from NASA Ames Research Center, uh, who received uh, um, a commendation for the launch of eight technology education satellites from uh, the San Jose City Hall. So you can see here, you know, the, the mayor and Dr. Papadopoulos, you know, receiving uh, the, uh, the award. So a lot of exciting projects for you guys to join and participate. We're also very proud of our alumni. Uh, this is just a, a very small sample. Uh, Gonzalo Mendoza, BSAE 1998. He is now um, Vice President of Innovation at uh, Textron Aviation um, for the uh, Cessna aircraft. Um, uh, Jay Vesterveld, uh, who started our rocketry class and almost set a national record back in 2013. Now he works for uh, Space Systems Loral, uh, Mission Operations Manager. Uh, Dr. Wade Hoops, uh, Professor of Aerospace Engineering now at West Virginia University. And we do have a bunch of our graduates who have gone on and earned uh, PhDs. And some of them, of course, uh, choose to do more exciting things like learn how to become an astronaut, uh, like Anima, Anima Sabale, uh, who is her passion and she still um, participates in uh, the astronaut uh, training program. Uh, she got her MSA uh, in 2010. So uh, that's in a nutshell um, what our department is all about. And if you see some of the comments here, uh, we really do take care of our students. Uh, we have a very strong learning community, uh, on-demand tutoring. Uh, we try to network students with each other through uh, all kinds of clubs uh, like AAA, the Rocketry Club, uh, uh, Students for the Exploration and development of space. Um, and and there, there's also lots of opportunities to create relationships uh, through um, internships uh, or permanent jobs after you graduate with uh, a lot of the uh, um, local aerospace industry. So our program is located in, in the heart of Silicon Valley. And what a lot of people don't know is, is there is also a lot of aerospace activity in, in the Valley. Uh, so you're probably familiar with the NASA Ames Research Center, but there's also General Electric, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Space Systems Loral, and a bunch of um, smaller companies, um, which uh, we're only beginning you know, to, to explore. Um, for example, I, I got an offer from a, a company a couple of weeks ago, uh, it's called Momentus, to hire about 15, um, aerospace engineers for internships this coming summer. So that's, that's a great opportunity. Uh, most of them actually, they, they want them in uh, the area of astrodynamics, but also in, in other areas you know, as well. So anyway, I don't want to talk too much. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of our program and our department and introduce you quickly to our faculty. If you guys have any questions, you can find my contact information on uh, our website, but since you're here, I will stop sharing and see if you have any live questions for me. I hope you'll speak up. Oh, I see Olivia. I see one hand. Okay, so I'm not very good at keeping track, but Olivia, you can go ahead and ask your question. Can we un unmute Olivia? Yes. Hi. Um, I was wondering, have you had any um, anyone do aerospace engineering while also on the pre-med track? On pre-med? Uh, I not aware of anyone. Um, that doesn't mean it's impossible. Um, depending on the requirements of the pre-med track, um, it uh, may take you, you know, a little bit longer if you pursue, you know, both programs. Uh, wh where are you doing pre-med? At uh, San Jose State? Uh, yeah, hopefully. 
yeah so so normally if you do uh, i mean i don't i don't know what the requirements are for pre-med like how many how many units uh, do you have to take do you know no i'm not i'm not sure yeah because typically we we discourage people from doing two majors because that that takes uh, you know the, the university has a requirement where if you do uh, if you pursue a double major, you have to come up with uh, 33, I believe, distinct units between the two majors. And that's, that's not impossible, but you know, 33 units, that's uh, it's about a year, it's an extra year, you know, so you, you can do that. Uh, and another possibility, uh, which may take you just as long is you get the degree in your preferred area and then you come back to us for a master's degree so you can get an advanced degree in aerospace engineering and you do have to make up uh, some of our junior level courses uh, but overall you know it takes about an extra year you know if, if you do that and then you end up with a master's degree plus whatever original degree you know you wanted to pursue thank you you're welcome okay i see another hand there um so Adriana, you can uh, okay. You can unmute people when you see hands up. Um, uh, yeah, yes, Hindu. You see, yes, Hindu. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so when I got accepted first, I went on Reddit and asked people around how's the program and everything else, right? So one of the people told me that some of the like um, textbook like we use at for aerospace engineering are old and is it something to be concerned about the textbooks are old yeah i don't know who, yeah like, we use the the latest uh, editions of uh, any textbook that we use um and in fact uh, they, the the publishers wouldn't allow us to use older versions uh, because they lose money. Uh, here, here, here's, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know where these comments are coming from, but, but let, me, let me speak to that. Um, so, it, so as you probably know, you know, publishers like to come up with new editions every year, right? And, and, and these books are not cheap. They charge you $300, you know, $250, you know, for each book. Uh, there has been a concern about the cost of textbooks uh, from a lot of students. So sometimes what we do is we, we don't require the students to buy the latest edition. So if a student goes out and buy a used book, which is an older edition, we, you know, we can still work with that, you know, because the improvements from year to year are minimal. So this way we can save people a lot of money. So instead of paying, you know, $300 for a textbook in aerodynamics, you may buy a used version for only, you know, 70 or 80, or, or you know, some people go online and get the international based version, you know, for less than that. Um, so maybe that's where the comment is coming from, you know, N not that the, the books that we use, you know, are old, you know, I, we, we, I don't think we have any old textbooks, you know, in any of our courses. Thank you very much, Professor. You're very welcome. Uh, Dr. Mortos, we have a few uh, questions in the chat. And one of them is, when and how do we end up deciding what to specialize in? Uh, oh, you, don't, you don't have to worry about that at all uh, because we won't let you specialize un until the senior year. So the, the program, uh, as, as I showed you in the curriculum earlier, um, requires all, this, all the students to take a couple of courses in each of the fundamental areas, like a couple of courses in dynamics, a couple of courses in uh, controls, a couple of courses in aerodynamics. So um, only when you get into the senior year, you have a choice whether you go into aero or astro. So if you like airplanes, you do your senior design project in uh, aircraft design. And we also have electives 
that uh, specialize in aircraft design, like UAV design. If you like more spacecraft or space applications, then you do your senior design in spacecraft design. And then we have a bunch of electives related to space, like rocketry, um, space systems, um, et cetera, et cetera. Does that answer your question? We have another question, Dr. Mortos. Why might I choose SJSU for aerospace over other universities? Uh, because our program is uh, very much hands-on compared to other universities, we have a lab pretty much with every required junior level upper division uh, aerospace engineering uh, class. Um, there's two dynamics courses. You'll do wind tunnel experiments and water tunnel experiments in both of them. Uh, we have uh, dynamics experiments. We have uh, aerospace structures experiments. Uh, we have experiments in our controls classes, A157 and 168. And our senior design projects are also very much hands-on. So you get to design and build and test um, actual you know, airplanes or, or spacecraft. I don't know very many schools that provide so much hands-on um, opportunity as, as we do. That's one reason. Another reason is, uh, uh, as I mentioned in my overview, uh, we're very close to an aerospace hub. Um, it's driven by NASA Ames and Lockheed Martin and the big uh, companies, but there's also a lot of smaller companies, a lot of startups. Um, and so there's lots of opportunities to make connections with any of these companies and uh, um, find employment upon graduation. Uh, get internships, you know, perhaps um, with some of these companies. And, and in general, you know, this is an opportunity that other aerospace engineering programs don't, don't have because of their location. Okay, another question. How many students are in the AE program? We currently have uh, about uh, uh, 350 undergraduates and uh, 81 graduate students. So the, the, there is a big demand for the, for the program and, uh, and uh, it's been growing. Um, and we, we, like, you know, we like it to grow because the more the program grows, the more resources we get, the more faculty we can hire, more specialization we, we can have, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously we don't want to, to uh, go too crazy, but uh, we're still in the, in the growing mode. Uh, we're going to hire uh, one faculty member this year and, and two more uh, faculty next year. Okay, could you talk about mentorship available for undergraduates in the program? Uh, yes, so um, we, we, we get a lot of requests from uh, our students um, to start working with faculty early on on uh, different projects, you know, so they can get uh, research experience. Um, so this is one type of mentorship. So if your workload, your course load uh, and, and your life in general, because people have different responsibility, allows for a little bit of free time, uh, we can always find a faculty member who is willing to work with you uh, from you know, the, the time you, you step into our door and, and you start working you know, on simple projects, of course, uh, uh, but you gain some research experience. So when you come to the junior level, uh, and you do more sophisticated projects, you know, you, uh, you have already experienced, you know, how to work in a team and, and, uh, and how to do research and, and uh, design projects. As, as far as mentoring goes, we also pair uh, freshmen and sophomores with uh, senior students uh, through our aerospace uh, engineering learning community. Uh, Professor Hunter is the director of the community. So we take care to pair um, freshmen and, and uh, sophomores with seniors. Sometimes we give you an opportunity to work alongside the seniors and help them out in their senior design project. Uh, we do that through integration of uh, AE20, 
which is our CAD course, and A30, which is our programming course, with uh, aircraft design and spacecraft design. So uh, as soon as you take your first aerospace engineering course um, in the fall, you, you'll have an opportunity to uh, see what our seniors are doing in aircraft design and spacecraft design and, and work with them um, in, uh, in uh, common projects. Thank you. Is there a minor available in aerospace? Yes, we just established a minor in aerospace engineering. Um, it's, uh, let's see how many units, uh, three electives uh, plus uh, four. Yeah, it's about uh, 13 units, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head. So there's two required courses, A15, which is the history of flight. It's a one unit course and A100, which gives you the fundamentals of aerospace engineering. And then you pick um, any three electives from a list that, that we have. Um, and uh, you can get your minor in aerospace engineering. Perfect. What minor is good for people pursuing the AE program? Uh, you can, you can, uh, um, that's a good question. Uh, depending on your interests, um, yeah, that's very personal. I mean, you know, um, I don't know. Um, I, if I were doing a major in aerospace engineering, I would probably do a minor in uh, Argentine tango because that's my interest. Um, if your interest is in uh, mathematics, you know, you can get a minor in mathematics, you know, very easy or in physics. Uh, some people get minor in business. Um, so it's it's you know it's very personal. Um, what you what you might want to do is is first of all see what you're interested in, and then see which programs on campus, both in the College of Engineering as well as outside the college, offer minors. Because not every department offers a minor. So for example, there is a biomedical engineering minor, if I remember correctly. Uh, so if you're interested in, you know, biomedical engineering, that's a good opportunity for you, you know, to pursue a minor, you know, within the college. Uh, there is also, I think, a mechanical engineering minor. Um, and, and of course, there's a host of minors outside the college, you know, like business, uh, math, physics, um, et cetera. Okay, will all aerospace courses be in person in the fall of 2021? Uh, if I knew the answer to that question, I would win a million dollars, I think. Uh, uh, I, we, were, we were planning to have uh, about a third of our courses in person in the fall, and about a third hybrid, and about a third online. And uh, uh, my beloved wife just uh, read the news as we were driving here to campus that the governor just announced that uh, all classes are going to be in person in the fall. So I don't know anything about that from the university side, uh, but uh, who knows, May uh, maybe, you know, we'll, we'll get new developments um, over the summer, you know. So uh, as, as of now, the plan is to have about a third of our classes in person in the fall. All, all the lab classes, by the way, um, will be reinstated to, you know, fully in person. Okay, how has the curriculum been affected by COVID? And is the AE program in person? So that's related to the previous question. Yeah, so the, the curriculum has not been affected at all, uh, the, the, the courses have been taught, uh, the requirements have been kept in place. Uh, so we have not uh, dropped any of the requirements. Um, we did a pretty good job. Uh, I mean, I, I, we're very proud of our faculty uh, because they're very good in pedagogy and they, they care about the students. So they transitioned very quickly uh, in March of 2020 from uh, in-person to online. Um, I, I realize, you know, nobody likes online. Um, maybe some people do, you know, because of the flexibility. Uh, but we're all very anxious, you know, to come back and, and teach you, you know, face to face. Uh, but overall, the, the curriculum has been taught. Uh, we also try to 
follow the same pedagogy online that we do in the classroom. And what I mean by that is uh, we like to put students to work. We use a lot of active and uh, cooperative learning. So when you show up for class, uh, you're not going to see a faculty member, you know, writing on the board or all the time or uh, talking over PowerPoint slides. You know, uh, we, we do some of that, you know, but uh, we also give you problems to solve so we can coach you and help you develop, you know, problem solving skills. And uh, we've been able to do some of that online uh, using breakout rooms, but, but it's not as easy to do as it is face to face. Would you describe the program as collaborative? Uh, very collaborative. Um, I, I, I mean, I want to maybe I want to clarify the question. Uh, uh, what kind of collaboration do you mean uh, between the students, uh, student and faculty? Logan, can you address that? Is it um, Logan? If you can unmute yourself. Yeah, between students was mostly what I was thinking about, but faculty too, I guess. Yes, yes, that's 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 a good question. Um, so I I know you know I mean I know I, I think I know where you're coming from. Um, th those of us, uh, um, I mean I'm I'm you know I'm quite old you know compared to most of my faculty, but we we went through engineering programs that tended to be very competitive and. Um, by competitive meaning, you know, also curving the grades. So you could do very well in a class, but if you didn't make the top one third, you know, first, th then you would not get an A in the class, you know, and things like that. Uh, th this is this is old stuff, you know, this is old pedagogy and old systems, you know, I, I don't think anyone on our campus, you know, follows these kinds of philosophies anymore. Um, so we do encourage, um, uh, student to student collaboration because we recognize that students learn a lot more when they work with each other, both during class. So when we give you problems to solve, you know, we ask you to work, you know, in small groups, but also outside of class. So when you, when you do uh, projects, when you do experiments, you know, you work with others to collect the data and, uh, and write the reports. Uh, so, so the answer is yes, we, we uh, encourage uh, collaboration very much uh, between students. Is it possible to take aviation as a minor while taking this major? Yes, of course it is possible. Um, I, don't, I don't know um, whether aviation has a minor. Uh, it, they might, uh, but if they do, uh, it, of course it's very possible. The, the minor, you know, to get a minor in anything, it is, uh, it is easy to do because you can squeeze the four or five courses that are required for a minor, you can squeeze them into a regular semester uh, in which you're taking courses for your major. So that's typically, you know, very, very easy to do. That's all the questions I see. If I miss somebody, please speak up. Yeah, if, and if anybody wants to ask the question other than typing it, uh, by all means, uh, feel free to do so. Um, Can I ask? Yes, Olivia. Uh, so uh, going back to what you were saying earlier about like the master's program, does San Jose State have like a BS to MS program, master's program, um, like either for aerospace engineering or for engineering in general? You, you mean an integrated program? Uh, program yeah we, we are actually we, we are um we are about to create one um so i, I i'm going to work with uh, the associate dean for graduate studies you know and uh and begin the paperwork for that but but even before we do that we encourage um our students who want to pursue a master's degree in aerospace engineering to start taking graduate courses while they're still in their senior year so yeah so the the way the way that works is um you have a lot of room in the senior year because the senior year is lighter compared to the junior year for example or, or the sophomore or the freshman year uh, there's only 12 units required 
in the fall and 13 units required in the spring. So if you have cleared all the previous classes, you know, uh, you can take two graduate classes in the fall and one in the spring. And if you continue for your master's program, immediately after you get your bachelor's degree, you can count those nine units towards your master's degree. So you can finish your master's in, in about a year, you know, maybe a year and a summer. Oh, wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I also had a question. It was mainly on the minors. I was just curious, is there a limit to how many minors we can take or is it just only considered like we can only have one or something? Uh, oh boy, I, I, I don't know that. Uh, I, I, this is a university you know, um, restriction if there is one. Uh, maybe someone in the engineering student success center, you know, uh, can answer that. I, I would imagine. I mean, what what the university um, is trying to do is is trying to get you guys out as quickly as possible. You know, so uh, I'm not sure that there is a limit into the number of minors, but I would imagine that uh, maybe at the most they would allow you to do two, <laughs> if, if, uh, if uh, that's the case, you know, one for sure, but you know, two, maybe. I also, yeah, since you asked the question, um, I, I also want to make this comment, you know, you know, people are asking me about double majors um, and the minors, you know, if, if you get one minor and it doesn't cost you anything, um, meaning you can squeeze the courses for the minor while you're taking the courses for your major, that's fine, right? If, if you want to do a double major, I, I don't recommend that because it's going to take you at least an extra year. And if you're going to spend an extra year, you might as well get a master's degree. Because if you have an advanced degree, um, that, that uh, makes your resume looks a whole lot better than let's say if you have a double major in physics and aerospace engineering. So, so you guys should be thinking about uh, graduate work if you like to take courses and you like to study and you like to be broad. Um, and uh, that, that'll, that'll bring you into a, a better pay scale, you know, when you get the job, right? If you have an advanced degree, um, you, uh, you increase your competitiveness and your options, you know, when you're looking for a job. Um, speaking of like jobs in general, like um, say like you were, um, you had like a, do, a, be a, um, a bachelor's degree in aerospace versus a master's degree in aerospace engineering, like would it um, be better to take a master's or is it okay to still like take, or just to still have like a bachelor's degree? If you're like you're applying for a job, um, you know there 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 are lots of jobs that all they require is a bachelor's degree, so you don't have to have a master's degree, right? Um, but uh, you know sometimes uh, if you if you want to get uh, a job that's more competitive, you know, to get in, um, like you know whether it's a, a, a you know a Lockheed Martin, let's say, or or uh, uh, you know NASA Ames, you know. Um, sometimes, even though the job may only require a bachelor's degree, if you apply and and you show that you have a master's degree, obviously, you know you have an advantage. So you will be preferred over candidates that only have a bachelor's degree. Um, and of course, there are other jobs that are better paying, uh, and they may require you know a master's degree. And if you don't have it, you know then then you you're not going to be able to apply. But, but in general, you know, you, you don't need a master's degree for every job out there. Any other questions? I'm sorry, I have one more question. I'm sorry. Um, and this one's a little oddly specific, but my, my dad really wants me to ask. Uh -huh. um, do you like roughly know how many students go on to work at like Boeing specifically? Um, I, we, don't, we don't have a, a 
statistics for specific companies. I mean, I yeah, know that's we, what I thought. <laughs> yeah, we we have um, we have uh, several students who ended up at Boeing. Mm -hmm. uh, the number is not that great because Boeing is not close to us. Okay, so if if someone sets their mind and they really want to work at Boeing, I, I mean, you know, they are well qualified. If they apply, you know, they will be accepted. Uh, and we have some really top-notch students who, who are currently, you know, working at Boeing. Uh, but most of our students, they like to stay local. And so they go to, you know, NASA Ames or to uh, smaller startup companies, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Momentus uh, or, or, uh, or larger companies like Lockheed Martin, Space Systems Loral. Uh, sometimes uh, students like the faculty member I introduced you, uh, Gonzalo Mendoza, he graduated in 1998 and he loved airplanes. So he would not take a space job. You know, he had to work on airplanes. So he moved out in the boonies in Kansas to work for Cessna because that was his passion. <laughs> and, and he's very happy. He's still there and uh, he flies. He flies actually uh, uh, twice a month to teach our aircraft design class. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Mortos, another question. How many people are usually in one class? Uh, good question. So, so before the pandemic, um, our classes were, the required classes were, uh, have grown to about 90, 95. Uh, now, I know this may sound like a lot, but, but you have to keep in mind, you know, this is not a lecture class where someone talks and you guys take notes. So you you constantly work with other students in small groups to solve problems. The professor walks around the room and gives you feedback, answers questions, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with the pandemic, as, as strange as it may sound, because we wanted to maintain that active learning approach, uh, we realized it, it, does, it, it doesn't work. You cannot get 90 students active, you know, in an online class and break out rooms and all these things that, that becomes very cumbersome. So we set a limit to about 50. And so our online classes now have a limit of 50. Uh, when we, when we uh, go back in person, uh, um, we may keep the same limit for in-person classes, uh, or if we have, you know, really good faculty members who know how to engage students, because that's the most important thing, you know, we, we may allow the, the class size, you know, to be you know, what was before the pandemic, you know, 80, 90 students with the understanding that, you know, it's going to be very active. Uh, the senior design class is, uh, is about uh, half that, you know, so it's about uh, 30 people typically in aircraft and 30 in spacecraft design. and our electives can be anywhere from five you know to 30 students any recommendations for clubs in AE lots of recommendations for clubs in AE um, we'll start with the uh, 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 the club, uh, which represents the uh, professional organization for aerospace engineers, uh, or AIAA, American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics. The advisor is uh, Dr. Papadopoulos. It's a very active club and very popular. I think it, the membership is uh, is one of the largest. You know, uh, 150, you know, 200 students. Then we have uh, SEDS, uh, students for the uh, exploration and development of space. Then we have the Rocketry Club, which is very active, uh, helping students uh, become certified to launch rockets uh, using an organization that's called uh, Tripoli. Uh, we have, let's see, I, I need to go on our website, you know, we've got a bunch of them. Uh, we have Sigma Gamma Tau, which is by invitation only. So I would strongly encourage that you guys um, strive uh, to achieve the standard. Uh, I think you need a GPA of 3.5 basically to be invited uh, to become a member of Sigma Gamma Tau. And uh, it's our Aerospace Engineering Honor Society. Um, we ask you to do some service uh, to the department, to other students or to the community. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be invited to join Sigma Gamma Tau, 
So you may volunteer to uh, do demonstrations to high school students or during open house. Uh, so you show off our wind tunnel in our space systems lab, uh, or you may do tutoring um, to freshmen and sophomores, uh, outreach activities at high schools, you know, or elementary schools. So th this sort of thing. So let me, let me see what, um, if I can go online and see what else um, I may find. So here's our website, students, uh, and the public age scholar student clubs. Okay, so let me let me share uh, my screen. So here are all the student clubs, uh, and if you click on any one of them, uh, you'll see nice photos and hopefully contact information um, about. Uh, Oh, so you you basically email them and they get back to you, you know, with information. Uh, I'm trying to see who the officers are. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we have Tsarina is a chair currently, and Shivani is the vice chair, and Ian is the treasurer. Uh, so you can see all the all the uh, officers. Uh, you can ask them any information that you you want, and and of course, you know, they'll be happy to recruit you and and join the club. Um, there's a design build fly club, uh, a rocket club, the Sigma Gamma Tau, which is by invitation. Um, and uh, as you'll see here, you know, there is more than, than the aerospace clubs. Uh, for example, the engineers without borders, that's not an aerospace club, but you're more than welcome, you know, to join um, that club, uh, the faculty member. Um, who advises this club uh, maybe from another department, but they do very exciting projects and they get to travel around the world, you know, and uh, and engage with uh, local communities. We have Society of Women Engineers, uh, Spartan Racing. Um, this is SED, uh, Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. Let's see what's in the Rocket Club. Um, about what we do yeah so and they have videos so you guys feel free to explore another question what is the average salary for undergrad ae graduates the average salary oh boy um it's been a while since I looked at that, but uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was upper 60s, low 70s, if I remember correctly, uh, and that might be old. What does undergraduate research opportunities look like? Are they fairly competitive to find or mainly for upperclassmen? Undergraduate research opportunities? Correct. Uh, um, no, they're not. They're not hard to find at all. Um, the question is whether you guys have time, you know, for for research, um, because it's very important that you do well in your classes and you get A's and B's. But uh, any student who, who wants an opportunity to work on a project uh, with a faculty member, we can we can find something for you. What is the best way a freshman can prepare for doing well in the AE major over the summer? Over the summer, uh, get out your calculus books and your physics books and start solving problems. Uh, watch videos on YouTube. Uh, there's lots of nice demonstrations, you know, with different concepts. Uh, but basically, just keep in mind that um, aerospace engineering, just, just like all engineering, but aerospace more so than others, um, builds on a very strong foundation of uh, math and physics. So you want to make sure that uh, you know, you're very good in, in uh, calculus and uh, physics, especially the first physics course, you know, mechanics, because you're going to use 
calculus and physics in every single class. So um, it's like if I want to dance tango, you know, I need to practice my balance. If I don't have balance, I cannot dance, you know. So whether I like it or not, I have to be on one leg while I'm cooking in the kitchen, while I'm teaching in the classroom, you know, just to practice my balance. Those are all the questions I see in the chat, unless anybody else has any questions they would like, like to ask. Yeah, actually, I had a few questions. Um, I had one that you were just recently talking about, but then I kind of forgot it. But um, I also had some questions about like the classes. So you mentioned that like, um, 90 students were for like proactive classes, but say if you're doing like a lecture class, like how many students would be there for that class? Uh, well, okay, so when you when you are, um, if you come in as a, as a freshman, uh, right, and you'll be taking uh, general education classes uh, and math and physics, uh, to be honest, I don't know what the, what the cap is in these classes, you know. Um, so some of them may be, may be large, some of them may be small, um, but usually, you know, that, that should be of no concern to you. You know, what, what, you, what you need to learn is you need to learn how to navigate the university environment. And, and what that means uh, is you need to learn how to network with other students in the class and work together. So even, uh, you know, I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, I did my undergraduate work in, in Greece and it was very competitive and it was very difficult. And, uh, uh, you know, you have like uh, 60 students taking a final exam and only five get a passing grade. And then the rest, you know, go back six months later and you retake the exam, right? The teaching was very poor. Uh, we learned nothing, you know, in the classroom. But we learned a great deal. If we didn't, if we didn't learn, we wouldn't get our degree, right? And I, I came to Stanford, you know, to do my my graduate work, and and I did fine. So how how did that happen? So you 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 learn you learn how to learn on your own. So if if the professor doesn't teach well, you have to learn how to learn from the book. If you don't understand something, you know, you team up with other students and say, hey, you know, I'm reading this. I I don't I, I don't understand what's going on. Do you guys make sense out of this? Um, so I'm, I'm just describing worst case scenario, you know, at San Jose State in general, the whole campus, you know, has very good professors and we value teaching, you know, very much. It's not like it used to be, you know, 30 years ago when, when I was in school. Uh, but you have to learn how to network and, and uh, navigate the university environment in a community. Don't do this alone, you know. So, um, and, and aside from the students, you know, don't forget that professors have office hours so you have to take advantage of that you know if you if you have questions about the material you know make sure you go during office hours and ask the professor as many questions as you want and whatever is left over you discuss it with your student group so there's lots of help around you know as long as you take the time to utilize that help okay um, my second question was back on the summer thing. I finally figured out what it was. Um, are there any like um, websites or any like books that you recommend to like study um, for calculus or like physics? Oh boy, I, I'm not uh, I'm not current in my calculus, you know. <laughs> so I don't. I would say you know I, I don't. I can't recommend any. Uh, uh, but when when I was studying. Uh, stuff you know to pass exams or to do well in classes the the books that were very helpful to me were books that uh, presented uh, solutions to problems so um, sometimes you know you pick up uh, like a calculus book you know and it's all the way they don't do that anymore I mean the books are pretty good now but when I went through school it, there were no example problems you know so we had to go to the bookstore and really look for books that had example problems on how to integrate different functions, kind of like the SHOM outline series, if you're familiar with them. Uh, so, so these books, I, I found them very helpful as a student because uh, when you take exams, you have to solve problems. So if you 
it, it doesn't matter how well you understand the theory if you don't know how to apply the theory in the solution of problems you know it's it's not going to help you much so uh, you know for for you guys you if you if you're going to start you know with math um you want to start with a textbook so you can go on the website um, and find out, uh, like, if you're going to take Math 30 in the fall and see what is a textbook and pick it up early and go through the textbook and, and see, you know, um, how, how well, you know, it flows, you know, and, and uh, chances are, you know, you're going to like the textbook. Um, if, uh, if, if there is a class, you know, let's say down the road where you don't like the textbook, then find another one that, that uh, discusses, you know, the same subject. Okay. Um, and also kind of like hinting off of Olivia's um, question, I was wondering about the same thing, but for internships, like, um, is it fairly competitive for internships or is it just mainly for like upperclassmen or can like underclassmen also take them? For in internships? Yeah. Yeah. So for, for internships, yeah, it is competitive. Um, so so there, are, there are, you know, there are some internships where they don't really look for any skills and anyone can apply and even freshmen you know can apply right but for most internships like the ones that that uh, came to me you know from a friend of a friend you know uh, a couple of weeks ago um they typically expect some knowledge of fundamentals like the students uh, need to have taken a few aerospace classes uh, like orbital mechanics or astrodynamics or aerodynamics because that's what they'll ask them you know to to work on you know during the summer so you know i, I think all you got to do is keep your eyes open uh, the the point uh, of contact in the department is uh, dr janine hunter who is a director of the aerospace engineering learning community so everything that comes my way i sent to her we also put it on our website um and and so take advantage of as many of them as possible so if you see something that's posted and you you're qualified i mean if they say for example freshmen are welcome you know go ahead and apply you know and see what happens um and uh for my last question is there any like skills going into freshman year that um, you would give us like other than um, building up connections with both students and possibly teachers as well? Yeah, so 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 people, uh, there's another talk I, I, I'd like to give, you know, uh, that again, Dr. Hunter organizes how, how to become a rocket scientist or how to succeed in college, you know, and all these things. Uh, and, and I'll be happy to do that. Maybe in August, you know, we organize something like that. So uh, again, it boils down to how to navigate, you know, college. Okay, so a, a lot of students don't realize that that college and high school are different. They operate in very different, you know, ways, right? Um, so you you have to make time for your courses. Um, professors teach; they move on with the subject matter. Um, if you stay, if you fall behind it becomes very difficult, you know, to catch up. And, and that's how people fail, you know, classes. So, so you have to make sure, first of all, that you don't overload yourself. Like if, if you don't work, um, if you don't have to work to support yourself, then you can take uh, 15, 16 units. That's what we have in the four year plan. Some students, they don't like to take 16 units because they realize, you know, they, they can't handle, you know, that many units and they, they settle for 12, you know, or 13. Okay, that, that's also acceptable. The, the most important thing is you have to realize for every hour you go to class, you have to be prepared to put in three hours outside of class. Because you have to, you know, first of all, before you go to class, you have to prepare you know if you just show up in class and wait for the professor to introduce the material you're you're already behind why because if the lecture is good and it's clear and you get a lot of it great okay then you go home you read the book afterwards and you'll do fine but sometimes you know in most cases at least when i went through school that was not the case 
So if I read the book before I go to class, I know what's coming. I already have questions. So as the professor is introducing the subject, I can raise my hand and say, well, you know, I read that in the book and the way he explained it is still not clear to me. So you can ask the question on the spot, you know, and, and then you stay, you know, you stay in part, you know, with the, with the material. Uh, then, then if the professor uses active learning in class, which they should, when they give you a problem to solve, you're ready to jump on it and benefit from it, right? So you're going to try to solve the problem. If you have any questions, right, he'll come, you know. If you, if you go to class cold, then, um, you know, it'll take you longer to come up to speed. Uh, you won't know what questions to ask, so you're going to miss the opportunity, and then you're going to have to deal with this after class, right? And you can do that, you know, but, but that, that puts you, you know, behind. So, so I tell students, you know, make sure you spend you know, at least an hour, an hour and a half to prepare before you go to class. Then after class, you spend at least three hours going over the material, got to read the book, got to take notes, you got to solve problems, you know, read the examples, go over the examples by yourself, and then try to solve problems from the back of the chapter, you know, because that's that's how basically you become better at it. So all, all of that, you know, it's, it's common sense. I mean, there's nothing, there's no, nothing secret about it, but it takes time. And so people sometimes take shortcuts and they say, yeah, you know, I'm smart, you know, I'll, I'll spend only, you know, an hour, you know, outside of class and, and it just doesn't cut it. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I taught aerodynamics for 30 years. If I were taking my class and I know aerodynamics, I have, PhD, I have a PhD in aerodynamics from Stanford, but if I were taking my class to keep up with the work that I assigned the students, I would need to put in a minimum a minimum of six hours. If, if I put, let's say, only three hours a week for my class, I would not be able to finish the work I give my students. So now imagine that you're taking the class and you're not an expert in aerodynamics, right? You have to grapple with concepts. You have to think about it. You know, you'll have lots of questions. You got to talk to people, you know, you got to talk to the professor, to other students, the TA, right? That's going to take even more time. So you, you just have to allow, you know, for, for time, you know, that's, you know, there's no, no secret. Just like, how do you go to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. How do you become a better tango dancer? Practice, practice, practice. We have a, a few more questions, Dr. Mortos. One is which course courses should they enroll in first? Uh, if, if you guys, if you guys are good with uh, math and uh, physics, uh, you should follow the four-year plan. Uh, let me let me pull it up here. Um, and I know this is one of the things I hate. It's it's not one click. You know, it's uh, multiple clicks. Uh, Bachelor of Science. Uh, course requisites, syllabi, uh, minor, master, syllabi, student, program, focus, admission, where is it? Uh, Four-year roadmap, there you go. So it's on our website. Um, let me find it. Uh, oh, got to search the entire catalog. Uh, a Aerospace engineering, four-year roadmaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm telling you, don't become a computer scientist. You know, these people are not good. Um, so let me, let me find these. Uh, so here's a four year plan, right? So if you have the prerequisites, uh, um, just, just follow the four year plan. Take uh, Calculus 1, Chem 1A, um, AE20. That's the class I was telling you where we'll team you up with uh, seniors. Um, so you, you learn CAD, Computer Aided Design in AE20. And so you work with seniors and they'll give you some simple drawings you know, to, to uh, draw, uh, either aircraft or spacecraft, depending on your preference. Then uh, you do English 1A and uh, Engineering 10. Okay, and then uh, in the second semester, you'll take your first physics course, and then calculus two, and then AE30, which is programming, English 1B, 
uh, oral communications, et cetera, et cetera. So you cannot go wrong if you follow uh, the four-year plan. Now, if, if uh, for some reason, you know, you are not ready to take, let's say, uh, Calc 1 um, or Chem 1A, you know, whatever, then, then we need to talk to you, you know, we need to have some advising, you know, to figure out uh, what's, uh, what's the best way. But uh, take any course from the first semester. And, and if, for example, let's say you're not ready to take Calc 1, take the previous one, okay, Wh whatever it is, because you have to come up to speed, you know, uh, in your math as quickly as possible. Um, are there student services that are offered for peer tutoring, mentoring available? Yes. Uh, so first of all, I, I would begin uh, with the uh, aerospace engineering learning community. So you should uh, send an email to Professor Hunter uh, who directs that community, you know, and she'll set you up, you know, with an upper division student, you know, for mentoring. Um, the college also has um, several societies, okay? So for example, if you, you know, if you want to join the SWE, you know, Society of Women Engineers, um, we, we're trying to get organized, even at the department level, uh, Dr. Chiericchetti will start a, um, a women's club, you know, whatever she calls it uh, in the fall. Um, and so there'll be activities just for aerospace engineering, you know, um, uh, ladies. Uh, but, but the college also has uh, the Society of Women Engineers. And so you may, if you join that, that uh, club, you know, you'll meet uh, engineers from civil engineering, mechanical, electrical, you know, and other, and other majors. And, and, and the SWE is just one example. There is also Society of Latino Engineers, you know, de depending what your background is and uh, which, which group you want to join, there is lots and lots of student clubs. So I would, I would encourage you to do join um, as many as you can um, just make sure you know don't allow too much clubbing to take away from your studying um, but other, other than that I think it's uh, you know the college experience does involve you know a lot of socializing and uh, networking and you get a lot of support you know from other students also how would you recommend students? to prepare for math and science courses, specifically those who haven't taken physics or calculus courses in high school? So um, if, if, you, if, if, you have, if you're not ready to take uh, um, physics 50, for example, uh, let's start with the physics uh, sequence. There is a course, uh, Physics 49, if they haven't changed the number, and you can take Physics 49 in the fall. Uh, if, if, you, if you're not ready to take calculus yet, uh, then depending on how much math you had in high school, uh, you may, um, you, th there is different classes, you know, I don't want to call them out off the top of my head, uh, but there is a a class which is five units and integrates analytic geometry, uh, or, or there is a, a class which is just analytic geometry. I mean, uh, we, we have classes that go back to, you know, uh, trigonometry. Um, if you have to take any of these classes, um, the, the makeup classes, uh, you don't necessarily have to take them at San Jose State. If you have an opportunity to take them at a, a local community college, it's going to cost you a lot less. So the the, the only caveat there, uh, and, and there is you know there is nothing wrong. I mean we, we'll deal with it. Is that if if you're not ready to do, to do math thirty in uh, the first semester, 
okay, then make sure you take whatever math you need. And that might set you back a little bit because you're not gonna be able to do physics in the second semester, right? So that's why we have advising. So every semester you're required to see an advisor. And so we'll look at the classes that you are taking, you know, in the first semester, and then we'll find the best set of courses for you to take in the second semester. Uh, also, if, if you have to make up courses, or if you have to work and you can't take a full load, or if you don't like to take a full load because uh, you know 16 units is too many for you, right? And you want to take 12, you can always use the summer to make up some of the units. So if you go to a community college in the summer, you can take math, you can take general education courses, you can take physics, chemistry. I mean, they have courses galore. Any any course that you see in the four-year plan in the first two years can be taken at a community college and transferred over. If a student took college prep physics in high school, would that student be eligible to take physics 50 at SJSU? If you took college prep, uh, okay, so that means uh, no AP. Because if you have taken AP physics, uh, then uh, you might even uh, bypass the first course and go into physics 51. If you're talking about, yeah, college prep, uh, yeah, if you took college prep, yeah, you should be able to go in straight into physics 50. And the last question I see is, are college advisors available right now? College advisors. Uh, there are college advisors available. There are university advisors available. Uh, I would advise you, however, since you asked the question, to talk to an aerospace engineering advisor because we know best what's good for you. So uh, you'll have specific questions about uh, what classes to take, depending on where you are. And we know our curriculum better than any other advisor. So um, send me an email, you know, if you, if you have a question um, or you can, uh, you can send an email to any of our advisors. We have, let me, let me introduce our advisors to you uh, so you guys can contact them directly but you're welcome to email me as well um so let's see ae uh faculty part-time faculty so let me figure out how to share share okay so if you go to our faculty page uh, here is the first advisor, Dr. Rada Aravamudan. Uh, she's very knowledgeable. She does a lot of advising. Um, and then uh, Professor Hunter, she specializes in uh, freshmen. And in fact, she advises all the freshmen. Uh, so since you guys are freshmen, uh, you may want to start with uh, Professor Hunter. And uh, do we have a third one? Uh, we do, Alisa, where's Alisa? And uh, Alisa Villanueva, who is one of our uh, graduates from our own program, she has earned her master's degree and, uh, and works currently at NASA Ames. And she's kind enough to come back and um, advise a lot of our students. So you can, you can um, uh, email any, of the three, but uh, since you are freshmen, I, I would uh, suggest you guys start with uh, Professor Hunter. And I'm also very available if you have any questions. Those are all the questions for now. I don't see anything else in the chat, Dr. Mortos. Well, I want to welcome you one more time to our aerospace engineering department. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you, uh, even via Zoom. Um, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in person sometime during the summer or in the fall. So when, 
when you guys uh, come to campus in the fall, uh, stop by my office and say hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoy the I'll summer. Stop. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye. There we go. Wow. How many? How many were there? Uh, Thirty-one. 31, wow. Good thing I showed up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like tango, you know, I love to improvise. Uh-huh. That was great. <laughs> so what are you doing the rest of the weekend? What are we doing? I, I've got my sweetheart here, just picked her up from the airport and we're both starving because we haven't had lunch. Go have lunch. <laughs> and so we're going to go have lunch. And then who knows? Good for you. I'm going to go to confession right now. Oh, wow. Now you, you, you didn't have to say that now. You know, I keep, I keep taking <laughs> Holy Communion without confession, you know. I go every week. <laughs> for confession? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. I go every week for Holy Communion, but uh, without confession. <laughs> And then, um, and then Bob and I are going to go out to dinner and tomorrow church, and that's it. Is 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 Bob confessing too? Well, if he were confessing, he'd be stuck there for a long time. <laughs> 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 well, that was really nice, and I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Thank you. The same to you, Adriana. I appreciate all your help in setting these Ab things up. Absolutely. And I'm blown away because, you know, we are told to use Spartan Connect. Uh -huh. And for those figures to be completely off, I mean, it wasn't a little bit off. And like you mentioned, there was there's students who are, have graduated and are even teaching. So Oh, oh, you mean to get the, uh, to get the Yeah, that yeah, was... no, you, you gotta go, you got, I don't know, uh, who told you to use Spartan Connect? Uh, Molly. To get, um, to get, uh, to get when the... I was, when I was first hired, we were told that Spartan Connect was now the tool to use to extract data for, you know, what, kind of gender, what, um, if it's undergraduate, graduate, if it's males or females, and it's all wrong. It, it is all wrong. I, actually, this is so funny because I've been using IEA because that's what I know. And, um, and, then, and then Thalia uh, has recommended the statewide, there's a statewide uh, uh, what, what is that thing called? I forget what it's called, you know, where they have a uh, graduation statistics and, uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, achievement gaps, you know, and things like that. And I've never used that site, you know, but I, I have a link, you know, somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I never heard about Connect, the Spartan Connect, and that you can get. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, well, I mean, I'm going to get to the bottom of it because that's very skewed. That's no, no, I mean, just, just go into um, the, the link that I gave you. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was getting, I, I was getting I kind of lazy. It. Yeah, that, that's why I... And interesting because it only had data from fall. It doesn't have the spring data yet. There are, you know, I mean, the website varies, you know, um, depending okay. on where you go. Yeah. But, but regardless, I mean, for sure, I'm going to use the institute institutional research website now but all of these portals need to talk to each other oh they and don't they should ex well, they need, and if they don't talk to each other they should at least contain the same data i i'm telling you uh when we had the program planning uh, meeting in uh, 2014 um i i i went into the meeting and uh, I had pulled up uh, graduation rates, you know, six-year graduation rates, 28%, and which was really low. And, and the, the team, uh, 
the provost, you know, and, and the rest of them, you know, they were they were saying, oh boy, you know, your graduation rates are really low, you know, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, you, you need to work on that. I go, yeah, yeah, you know, we're aware of that, you know, there were some issues. And they says, yeah, I mean, you know, 30, 33% is, is uh, 10 points below the college. I go, well, 33, I, I saw 